Hey guys, how are we doing? Okay? Yeah, okay, not, not too bad. Thanks for getting in touch. Yeah, sad day. What a player. What a person. Just a vibrant personality, wasn't he? Um, I remember watching an FA Cup youth replay to Alexander at Arsenal. I think it was 88 when I first seen him. And God, he was a different level, guys. He was just so much stronger, so much more powerful. You know, he he was... He was leaps and bounds ahead of the other guys. You know, Rob Jones, he went on to play for Liverpool, played mm. in that crew team. And, you know, he tore strips off him that night. He was just a different level altogether. You know, he was so strong. He was so more advanced. You know, I think he's just one of these kids that probably grew a beard at seven. You know, <laughs> yeah, and and a, a technically great footballer as well, right? You know, like that cliche of a good touch for a big man, but it's so true with yeah. him. Yeah, he, he, just that night, he, he, you know, when you see a player and you just say, wow, you know, and he, he was, Max, he was just a different standard. He was just a different class. You know, his movement, his speed, his vision, everything. He, he was he was just leaps and bounds ahead of them, you know. And when he come to Everton, obviously then, you know, he scored them nine goals that kept us up, you know what I mean? And then, uh, you know, he, he took Everton to his heart. You know, he was a South London boy. He was a massive Arsenal fan, but he fell in love with Everton. Evertonians fell in love with him. And, you know, then later on in life, when you seen him on the TV and all that, you know, like we've been talking about, you know, with his dicky bow ties, he was just a lovely, vibrant character. Do you know what I mean? He was always smiling. He was, mm-hmm. you know, he, he's, he's the sort of bloke that would light a room up, you know, when he walked into a room, you know, and it's such a sad day. Yeah. Absolutely is. Well said, Brendan. Joe, you, Brendan. Joe's an Evertonian as well. Hey, Joe. Hey, you okay? Yeah, not, okay, not yeah. too bad. Really sad day. Such a lovely such a lovely bloke. Yeah, great fella. I mean, I remember one time, um, my eldest lad, he's like in his 30s, he's now got his own kid. It was about 10 years ago. We um, had a great day. We went out in the morning at breakfast with our candle um, and then um, went to match and I remember we'd be filly. And I, I, I was bladdered by this time. It was my baby. <laughs> Went home and my lad had gone into town with his mate Bolden. Um, and the phone rang. And he went, I've got someone who wants to say happy birthday to you. And Kev comes on the phone singing happy birthday. <laughs> and the phone to me. Wow. And I was like that. I was because I was still a bit drunk. I was like, super Kev, super Kev and Campbell. I was like, I don't believe you. I had to, my lad like, took a picture, like sent it across to me and everything else. And just, I was brilliant. And when he was down the ground, like the winds low on the brick. And, yeah. Never walked past anyone. Never, never said no to not. Yeah. He's just really, really great fella. And that 99 season when we got him on loan from Tops on Sport, just great. Kept us up single handedly, basically. A little bit of help from Florian Jeffers, but yeah, he was just brilliant. It's a brilliant fella. Be badly missed. Yeah, wonderful words. Lovely story. Peter's an Arsenal fan. Hi, Peter. Hello, lads. You all right? Yeah, not mm. too not too bad. Nice, nice. Yeah, so just sad news about Kev Campbell. Yeah. Um, just wanted to like tell a story about meeting him once up in Liverpool, mm-hmm. and uh, so we start talking and all this. And I, I, on the evening, I hadn't taken my phone out with me, and he's gone, "I'll oh, take my number. We'll meet up when you're, you're in Liverpool." And I said, "I haven't got my phone, Kev." So he goes, "Oh, what's your number? I'll phone you." So he's, he's dropped me a message, and all the way home, me, I'm saying to me mate, like, "Oh, do you reckon he's text? Do you reckon he's text?" And he did. So anyway, we we ended up started talking and all sorts of stuff like that since then and onwards, and this is going back six years now. And then several occasions, Arsenal have been playing, been in a pub full of Arsenal fans. Uh, I'll ring him up and he'll go, here, I'll give, I'll say, hey, I'll give people that wanted to talk to you. And they'll give me phone around the pub. 20, <laughs> 20, minutes, 20 minutes later, he comes back and he's just been talking to everybody in the old Ozone. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> The time he had for his fans, yeah, for, for teammates, whatever club he went to, unbelievable fella. Yeah. To give that positive energy out and to give that what is love out because he it would get that back. Uh, what what a what a good man, it's a Peter! Great what, image, what, what a it? great image. What's yeah, this? it's the Kevin Campbell half hour. He's just passing the phone around. Anyone want with Kev? Yeah, all right, you do. Yeah, why not? Uh, let's talk to John Hartson. Thank you, Peter. Thank Lovely you, call. Peter. Let's talk to John Hartson. Um, how are you, John? Hello, John. I'm good, thank you, lads. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm trying to work out like how you know you you came to Arsenal in the timeline yeah. in in '95. Just when Kev, did, did you cross? You must have crossed over a bit, right, with Kev. Yeah, I think when I arrived at Arsenal, I was I was just nineteen, so I was I was a baby really at that time. And uh, I remember Kev still being there, and he, Kev was great with me. Do you know, there were some big players, big characters at Arsenal at that time. And uh, 
Kevin was great. You know, he would talk to me um, in the cafeteria over a cup of tea, and then, you know, he would he would he would um, introduce me to all the players and just, you know, help me sort of mix in with the group. You know, and he didn't have to do that. But um, yeah, it's so so sad. You know, the world can be cruel at times, mm. and to take a great man like Kevin at just fifty four, so um, such an infectious character. Mm. Always had a smile on his face. I've never ever heard anybody say a bad word about Kevin no. Campbell. He, he genuinely was a really good fella. Yeah, and I, I mean, I'm, I've said this before today, and I really believe it, right? And I sort of think it, like, uh, but within football, when we talk about you know people good in the dressing room, we don't ever really talk about kindness, right? But it seems to be the most important yeah. thing we can be, and he just exuded that. Yeah, I, I think kindness. You know that kind act can. It's not just in football. You know, it's 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 just general yeah. life. Mm. You know, if if so, all, I, I hear people say all the time, "Be kind." You know, be kind to people. Just go out your way to say good morning or shake someone's hand and things like this. And as I said, Ke- Kevin had time for everybody, and you know everybody loved him. It's easy saying that now because you know, bless him, he's passed. But genuinely, you know, I'm listening to the other callers and the kind words and, you know, the tributes people are paying mm-hmm. to Kevin. And it's true. It really is true. And it's uh, there's a real meaning to what people are saying about him. And genuinely, you know, he'll be sorely missed. And, you know, my thoughts are going now. My thoughts go out to his um, to his immediate family and, and his close friends. But uh, I'm sure as well, all, all the supporters and the clubs that he played for, you know, will be uh, you know Kevin will be sorely missed because he left his mark. You know, he left his mark on Arsenal and certainly on Everton, and he went to West Brom and you know he he, he helped save West Brom from relegation under Brian Robson. Um, and he, he was just a, he was just a really good guy. He played for Notts Forest, and irrespective of his football career, he was he was just uh, just a nice man. You know, that seems to be. A, a, a recurring theme actually is he he goes into a club and he brings that positive as a player brings that positivity and you know we've got Leighton Orient fans saying when he was there at 19 he was the best loan signing they'd ever had and, you, and you've got stories you know of, of Everton fans saying he kept us up West Brom fans saying the same thing wherever he went he seemed to take that positivity that he had obviously off the pitch onto the pitch with, with, with great effect yeah, and he, he was a really good player. You know, he was a very good footballer. Kid. Yeah. He was very strong. He was quick. He could, he could um, take the ball in. He, you know, he could, um, he could be strong. Um, so sort of with his back to goal, and he scored an awful lot of goals in his career. And one of the one of the um, one of the memories I can um, think back about Kevin was when I first went to Arsenal. Um, you know, him and Wrighty together, they were fantastic for the period. You know, their celebrations and everything else. And Ian Wright, again, very infectious. And Kevin, and when you watch them play together, they just looked as if they just, you know, they were playing in, in you know, in the field somewhere, you know, in the local park because mm. they enjoyed it so much. They seemed to be really good friends and their celebrations and everything else. And uh, that's what I can remember of Kevin. When he scored... You know, that smile, that big smile, yeah. you know, the feeling that he made so many people happy. You know, I'm, I'd never seen Kevin sort of um, not smiling. You know, every time you saw him, whether he was on Sky Sports, whether he was on the side of a football pitch doing some commentary, he always had a smile, you know, and he, he made other people happy around him as well. Uh, lovely stuff, John. Thanks Thank for coming you, on, pal. Appreciate okay, it, mate. Hope you're doing okay. Yeah. John Hartson there, uh, who played with him at Arsenal. Uh, Gareth says, uh, Kevin Campbell joined Jason Cundy on the Sports Bar a while back, as well as chatting about football. They were just singing along to 80s songs. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> we should do that. Yeah, I'm happy to do idea. that. Yeah, yeah, Clearly yeah, having yeah. a laugh and sharing his knowledge as, as well. Look, we've, uh, uh, you know, we've got uh, 10 minutes left of the show, and uh, we'll carry on taking your calls about Kevin Campbell. We're going to finish the show talking about Kevin Campbell. Sad news um, broke shortly into our show that he passed away at the age of, of 54. Chris Kirkland played with him at West Brom and joins us now. Hey, Chris. Hello, Chris. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Look, we've heard from so many former teammates about just how amazing he was in a dressing room and just how he brought everyone together. Is that your experience? It is, yeah. Listen, everything you've heard today, and I've just listened to Alan Myers now on Sky Sports as well, who, who spoke wonderfully about Kev. 
and everything you're hearing about him, everything everyone's saying, it's all true. I, I went there in 2005. I was still quite young, and as soon as I walked in the dressing room, it was, it was the first. In fact, I didn't even get in the building, and he was the first one to meet us. Just said, "Listen, just settle in. You'll be fine. Anything you need, come and see us." And he just had that respect off everyone. Whenever Kev spoke or whenever he said something, everybody listened and, and respected what he said, and he treated everybody the same, whether it was the you know the footballers or more importantly the people at the at the ground, at the staff, at the, at the training ground, all the other people. He treated everybody exactly the same, and I've heard it many times today. His smile and his his personality just lit up a room, and as soon as you're in his company, you just felt just one of them people that just make you feel. He just made you feel better. Mm-hmm. And the impact that one person can have on, like, you know, dressing rooms are funny places, right? And the impact that one person can have in positivity is huge. There is, and I've been in, I'm lucky I've worked with a lot of captains and been in a lot of dressing rooms, but he just had this way of, of pulling everyone together. And like I said, when he spoke, and, and, all, and, mo- and all the time, whenever he spoke, it was, it was spot on, it was true, but everybody listened and, and everybody shut up. Sometimes in dressing rooms, you get people still talking in the corners and stuff but when Kev spoke everyone was silent and listened to his every word because they knew what he was saying was true and they knew what mm. he was saying was trying to was for the best of the team and the best of the dressing room so yeah we've lost a, a, a wonderful man a brilliant player but more importantly a wonderful man and, and, and to be like that actually comes from, must come from a place of massive of confidence in yourself you know in a dog eat dog ambitious world that football is and in a football dressing room to, to be like that, but to also offer that care and, and thought to other players as well. You must have confidence in, in, your, in yourself. Yeah, he did. But it, listen, he was never flashy. He was never brass. He, he, he was just Kev. He was just, as I said, everything you've heard today and, and will hear over the next, you know, how many days and hopefully weeks and weeks about Kev and his legacy lasting years and years because, you know, people want to take note and, and listen to what people are saying about him. You know, future footballers coming for you, uh, through, future captains, uh, you know, people in charge of clubs. You want somebody like Kevin Campbell at your football club and you want somebody like him in your dressing room and leading your team because he's just, he just, as I said, I can't speak highly enough for him. And I didn't listen. I knew him back then and I've, he's kept in touch. He's messaged me when I was going through bad times myself and that's what he's like. He, you know, he, he's there for you when you need when you need him, but he won't be, he won't be, you know, shouting and being on TV and everything about it. He just goes around himself quietly, but you know that he's there for you. And as I say, I can't speak highly for him. I know there's a lot of people today that will be absolutely devastated and, and, and um, you know, won't be able to take the news in because that's how much he meant to so many people. Thanks, Chris. Lovely Thank words. You, Chris. Be well, mate. Thank you, pal.